nice morning, sunny blue sky. Last night we had a lot of rain, and late yesterday afternoon. So the growth is really jumping now. Erythronium beds just a week ago there was you could still see a lot of the the sands, but now the leaf growths. Of course, we need two things to fuel the the growth. You need some warmth and sunshine and light, and you need water. And we've got both in abundance at the moment. So let's have a walk in round this way, along the just the shape of the, the Scylla, Scylla rosenii in the shade. This is the shady side. A bit too many Colchicum agrippinums. I'll thin them out again this year after the when they flower. That's a good time to do it later in the year. Here all the wee hepaticas weighed down by the water from the rain, the night of rain. You can see all the, in there, all the ramondas that will come later. There's been some snowdrops, big haberlias there. And of course this is in the, in the back, so we can see in the back here. And across the These beds, we have lots of trilliums. Now these are invariably Kurubiashi and Chloropetalum. And I've looked at all the difference between the, like you're supposed to spot the difference between the length of the stamens and the length of the ovary. And it would appear in our garden we've got every inter, everything in between the two. So I, I suspect that in cultivation this crossing goes on. So the, if you look over there, the Erythronium revolutum is in over there, springing up, showing colour. More trilliums there with the lovely back lighting going through the leaves of the Veratrum. The giant shoots of the Podophyllum. Erythronium white beauties there, <coughs> coming out. And then just walking round the beds. There's so much coming. All the erythroniums at the side of the path. Look at these lovely leaves. These have all self-sown into the path here. I've not planted any of those out there. Here you can see the line of rocks there. That's the bed is at that side, so everything out this way is comp and self-sown. This year for sure I'm going to do something about the Selmizia walkericus. It's well named because it's walking out over the path, it's more or less taken over the path. So I've got cuttings of it, I'm going to cut it back, and get it back in there, it might regenerate. But even if we look in here, you can see the self-seeding. Look at all the young erythroniums. Here's a beautiful erythronium oregonum. That's self-seeded. And here's a, a seedling from the peony. So it's just this whole thing that I want in the garden. The, the parent peony is this great big one, which we greatly thinned out last year. It filled a huge space in there. So that's peony luteola. Lutea. And that's the form of Ludlowii. And all around here are the seedlings of it. And if we come down here still in the shade, you'll see all the Narcissus bulbicodiums. All self-seeded into the path. And down in here, all little seedlings, more seedlings coming. So we have mature plants. And we've got plants like this little cluster that will flower next year. And then we've got seed just germinating. So all those, all self-seeded, this crute here, are all self-seeded out into the path. Over there you can, should be able to make out just the line of the stones, that's the bed. So all these erythroniums are self-seeding. Then we can come round here where, you can see as I walk around how the garden's got sun and shade at any time of the day. Round here, here's the Helianopsis. The flowers really going over this are really funny, orangey, tangerine colour. 
these are the old leaves of stout growth so really nice but tiny down here we have the Trillium Hebersoni and look seedlings of it all along the bed the dogs think they've found something in the corner I can hear them squeaking so this, this is a lovely bed here of plants this is the slightly raised and if we just walk up past the the rhododendrons going to come round the wall here Primula marginata and up here all the cyclamen eh not cyclamen Trillium rivali I'll come back to this and show you when there are a bit more flower but all sorts going in that bed and we'll just go see what the dogs think they've found up here make them want to squeak so if I go up here past some troughs this is the area, These all these are boxes of erythroniums and I'm going to stop drawing them all in boxes now come round past this little pine tree we'll see them this down in here look Scoliopus bigalovii got all these lovely boxes of erythroniums was when I needed to increase them a lot and was producing them up but I don't do that now I don't, I don't have a need to do that now so I'm going to empty all those boxes out and in this area I'm going to create a new bed for some of the smaller I've got lots and lots of smaller bulbs that want planted out and this will become a bed for those. A Ramonda trough here. Already there's buds coming round here. Another bed of erythroniums that will soon be in full flower. And then we just finally come back round this bit to the to the pond. And here's the girls coming out of the out of the bushes. What did you think you find, girls? Was it a cat? Maybe a hedgehog? So here's my here's my rock with the pinguicula rock, and then already on there I can see the growth. If you look down, there's I can see there. Can you see it, pinguicula? I can't reach to show you without falling in the pond. And there's little orchids. And there's Megan. Now then, okay girls, we'll we leave it there. Time to go out.